Our mission at SD Bullion is clear, the lowest cost gold and silver available online. While we do not have pretty blue boxes, free shipping on every order, or glamorous gold and silver infomercials, SD Bullion has the lowest prices that may save you hundreds on your next order. So before you make your next investment, do the math and join the over 40,000 new customers who have recently made the switch to SD Bullion. Why pay more? Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with SilverDoctors.com and with us today is Lior Gantz from WealthResearchGroup.com. Lior, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, I'd first like to discuss the silver market. Now, you recently have been discussing that JP Morgan is running the world's most monopolized market, the silver market, and that they're unfairly manipulating the price. Can you discuss this? Sure. First of all, it's not just JP Morgan. Um, obviously, Deutsche Bank has, has settled out of court. Um, HSBC has been named Barclays in England. Um, so, so there's there's a bunch of major banks, and uh, what they're supposed to be doing is add liquidity to the market, um, but they do all sorts of um, of silver manipulation, fixing the price, suppressing the price. Um, sh you know, shorting it. There's so many things that uh, that are happening in the silver market. But what is important is that part of it is now changing. There's there's a a wave of regulations that are coming due uh, in 2018 that are changing the amount and an exposure that banks will allow themselves um, now that the, you know Deutsche Bank has been fined 38 million dollars um, and, and uh, the eyes of more regulators are are on these banks uh, you're already starting to see a change in the way silver trades but um, that said let's take a look at 2016 right um, 2016 the silver uh, the global silver uh, you know, nominal trading is about 2.2 um, billion dollars. Uh, I'm sorry, 2.2 trillion dollars. And the uh, the estimated global investment in silver is just 4.4 billion. So you've got a leveraged paper market of about 233 dollars to one. Uh, pretty insane. And uh, you know, j just just remember uh, when you when you manipulate prices, when you suppress prices, you're just condensing energy, right? So uh, uh, on the flip side, when that condensed energy releases, it, it can be spectacular. Um, obviously, there's uh, this this has been around for many years. This talk of silver manipulation, silver rigging, and when will silver break out? Um, it's all of these are open questions, but it is very important to understand that when, when you got something that's leveraged 233 to one, once you start deleveraging, then the price almost acts accordingly. So if this goes from 233 to one to 100 to one, silver will double most likely or, or close to double. When you see this thing going to 50 to one, it will quadruple. And from today's prices, you're looking at 50 to 60 dollars. Uh, per ounce of silver. Now that will change a lot of things in the silver supply, obviously, because more companies will come into the market. Um, but but the, the the opportunity will be in that in that two to three year period before new production comes in. Now you talk about what J P Morgan does and how they're kind of it's kind of like they're playing a game of poker where they can see all of what the other players are doing, and they do this. By because they run the silver ETF SLV. Can you expand on this? Yeah, sure. Um, so basically, the, the uh, JP Morgan, with the fact that um, that they can look at the screens of what the clients are doing and where people are setting their options, um, you know, the, the short positions, the long positions, the futures, they can see kind of uh, kind of the emotional uh, trend or thread line running through. Uh, traders from from the entire planet, from behind the scenes, they can uh, use this information either to entice their own clients to do something while they do the opposite of that, knowing fully well that uh, the clients will lose money, which is what they're uh, they've been up to for years. And uh, what is more remarkable, and you know this is this has no 
um, one hundred percent confirmation. But uh, most likely, they're building a physical hoard uh, of their own um, for 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 the uh, for the time when the silver manipulation will end, and then this, uh, the the price of silver will explode to the upside. So you've got this this massive short position on paper that they're doing and making a profit of, and they're also accumulating on the physical side using this uh, the suppressed price that they themselves create. It's a very smart game on, on their part, but it's uh, it's very unfortunate that it goes on for for such a long time. It, 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 you know, if you're if you're looking to expand your your physical position, your bullion position, it's great for for you because you get to do it at, at lower prices. But uh, as a silver stock investor, this is very frustrating. Um, you know, for for a lot of people. Uh, but on the flip side, they accumulate so much physical silver that they themselves will be beneficiaries of rising silver prices, which is definitely an incentive um, once this regulation comes in. And uh, obviously this regulation, this fear that's going on right now um, has already scared away the CME group, um, it's scared away Thompson's Rotors. These are the two custodians that, that are um, now ending their, their obligations uh, with the COMEX two years ahead of time. So you've, you've got a lot of changes in the silver market. Hopefully, you'll see the end of this uh, manipulation or the unwinding of this manipulation come into fruition in the next two to three years. And, um, you know, a, a, as I've said many times, I think the more appropriate uh, silver to gold ratio for these times when gold is used as money on the governmental central bank side and silver is not monetized, by big by big institutions, I think it's about forty to one. So you're looking at a, at a lot higher silver prices. Now, is what is happening? You know, this manipulation is that even legal? What they're doing? Well, uh, it, it is legal uh, uh, unless you prove it uh, that, uh, that that this is uh, blatant manipulation. Meaning, if uh, leverage is legal, so and naked leverage is legal as well. Is it ethical? Obviously, no, because they're using the mechanism of fiat money um, and credit to their behalf with the fact that they, they are the one issuing credit to the market. So they've got an advantage, a, a very unfair advantage over uh, you know, uh, regular investors. Is it, is it illegal? Of course, if you get caught... Uh, manipulating on the spot, it is illegal, obviously, because uh, um, you know uh, Deutsche has has uh, already admitted to silver manipulation. That's what they have admitted to to manipulating the price. Now, when you leverage something um, it, to the order of what they're doing, to me, it is illegal for sure. There, uh, the, the entire market, if it's 233 to one uh, leverage, that's Elijah. That's that's illegal. Uh, just think of any other industry where the actual uh, commodity trades for one dollar to every two two hundred thirty three dollars that that exchange in paper. Uh, it, it's not only illegal; it's dangerous. Now you've talked about that the gold and silver ratio is completely out of whack right now, and if we see silver kind of revalue itself and rebalance itself, we could see silver jump to, you know, 50 or $60 an ounce. Can you uh, reiterate a little bit about uh, the reasoning behind that? Sure. Um, obviously, going back in history, the the ratio is not 75 to 1 as it is today. Um, gold is, is a different type of metal than the other metals that uh, that are considered commodities. All the gold ever um, in supply is still around, most of it. If it's not in jewelry or used as, as uh, uh, partly uh, for electronical uh, components, it's still around. So the demand for gold and what drives gold price higher, especially in the fiat monetary system, is not uh, a lack of supply. There is supply. It is the investment demand coming not from... India and their jewelry uh, supply because that's very cyclical, very, very seasonal. What drives gold price higher is is its uh, role as an alternative currency 
uh, to all the, the national currencies. So when gold outperforms other national currencies, uh, it outperforms the price of, uh, of US dollars as well. And that happens in a declining or a negative interest rate environment, which is what's going on today. Uh, but uh, the, the other fact that is the other side of this is that it, it, gold prices act better if the S&P 500 is uh, acting, uh, is underperforming. And this is not happening today. And that's why you don't see gold exploding to the upside, go, you know, going higher. Obviously, only 7% of the world's currency is backed by gold right now with the price of it today. In 1980, it was one to one at $850 per ounce. If you want to equate that to today, if the US wants to um, cover all of its currency supply, uh, an ounce of gold will need to, to be over $15,000 per ounce. So obviously that's very, very far away, very far away. We're only covering 7% of the of the currency supply and globally, you're looking at uh, uh, if you want to, you know, uh, take all the all the debt and cover it with with ounces of gold, it will be about twenty three thousand dollars per ounce. So you're very far away from covering the entire currency supply. But um, there there's a there's a clear mentality with people. Obviously, after forty six years of of uh, fiat monetary system, they are very um, unaware of what the difference is between a bill and money. Uh, to most people. 99% of people, even if you whisper in their ears the entire Federal Reserve Act and you explain to them everything about the fiat monetary system, they will not change a single thing about what they're doing, how they're living, or you know, or how they're transacting. It will take a real crisis of confidence for uh, this system to change. Most people, including people who believe in the gold uh, theme, transacting dollars they're not completely out of the system they don't own 100 percent gold uh they, they have bank accounts etc so um there's a clear subconscious theme throughout the planet that currencies are uh safe somehow and this is very um dangerous if you own most of your savings it, just in, in in national currency you have a real problem uh, when when the time comes that uh, that the confidence level goes down substantially, and I think confidence either you have it or you don't, right, Elijah? So now people have confidence, but this can easily turn to a non-confidence environment. And um, but like you saw in 2008, it will take a real panic because even 2008 did not shake most people. It took two or three suits on TV reassuring everyone that everything's okay to get everything back to normal. So it would take a real horrible crisis for the entire system to change. Um, but in my opinion, the, the um, kind of stimulus that is going around right now with central banks buying $7 trillion worth of assets only in the first four months of 2017 is very problematic. So they're leveraging and leveraging and leveraging, and, and once they start unwinding this, it's going to be very, um, very dangerous for for people saving. So you've got to be very diversified within asset classes and not have your savings just in national currency. I don't know if that answers your question or not. One thing that I was going to also point out is you were talking about how um, right now people have confidence in the currency and also other countries at least have some confidence in the U.S. dollar. But one of the things you also have mentioned recently is that some countries kind of see gold as money, but no countries see silver as money right now. And you see that there could be this remonetization, as you say, of silver. So how would that impact the silver market? Sure, and, and, and going back to your last question because you, you've asked me about the silver price and I never answered that. I don't think it will be a one-night uh, one event. I don't think you wake up in the morning and silver will be repriced. Um, it, it will be a very gradual um, uh, rise in price. Uh, you know, the last time that silver to gold was 75 to one, it started and sparked a real 
uh, bull market in, in, the, in the gold and silver stocks um, uh, sector. And usually 80 to 1 is the extreme for the last 45 years. So once you see that going to, 40, uh, to 80 to 1, it usually reverse back to around 50 to 1. So 51, you'll, you'll see um, silver at a lot higher prices. Um, it is important to understand that silver acts very much today as an industrial metal. So the incentive of, uh, of commerce is to get that price down and not up. It's not, uh, it's not acting as a stabilizer for currencies. So um, the incentive of every commercial company in the world is to see the price of, of silver go down because uh, that will help the consumer buy more products like laptops, um, you know, cell phones, etc. And the myriad of other thousands of applications for silver, uh, which will all be priced uh, good for the consumer if silver prices uh, go down. Now, if silver resumes a monetary position with, uh, with either institutions, large funds, governments, etc., that changes the whole uh, theme for silver. And it becomes uh, much more entwined with its historical average of about 16 to 1. So it, it's, a, it's speculation whether or not this will happen and whether or not people will uh, reinstitute the free market or uh, whoever institutes uh, silver back as, uh, as a piece of – as a monetary unit. But you got to remember, the biggest and largest and most stable empires ever – did not use a gold standard. They, they they used a silver standard. The Ottoman Empire not too long ago, the Roman Empire, um, even the Greeks. So uh, silver is, is throughout history been used as money in, in commerce uh, very much so. But obviously in the 21st century, we're looking at a very sil uh, uh, a very different kind of silver standard uh, that's going to be very digitalized. Obviously backed by silver, but very comfortable for the for the average person. It's not like you're going to carry around silver coins that will never come back into um, commerce the the world is moving into digital currencies um, uh, hopefully outside of the realm of government but uh, it, it doesn't look like it right now um, but even if a, a gold or silver standard of some sort gets reinstituted it's going to be very comfortable and very easy to to deal with it's not going to be um, you know medieval times all right. Well, Lior Gantz, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we let you go, did you want to share with the viewers any last thoughts you had and where they can find you online? Sure. Um, I think I think it's important that people also take a look at at the uh, companies and uh, not only the physical bullion. Physical bullion will never make any investor rich uh, unless there's a total catastrophe, and in, in which time. Uh, getting rich will not be your highest priority. Um, physical gold and silver are insurance, and you know nobody buys a, a ten life uh, insurance policies and gets rich off of that. It's not the way to to think about physical gold and silver. It's very important for your listeners, even if this is not what they want to hear. It is important that they hear this. the The physical bullion aspect is to protect a portion of your savings. Uh, so you take a piece of your savings and you put it into physical bullion. If you're looking to take advantage of gold and silver and other industrial metals, such as zinc, for instance, that is in very short supply, you've got to look at supply-demand fundamentals, at the cyclical um, undervaluation and overvaluation of the stocks, and and take a position not a substantial one because th these are very dangerous companies um, to be involved if you don't know what you're doing uh, and take a position with silver or gold or zinc companies that will propel your portfolio much much higher uh, if you know what you're doing for example uh, just to give you an idea Elijah a, a company that we cover um, a, a wealth research group called zinc one which uh, Keith Newmeyer is a major shareholder of um, will be a producer in three years. They've just acquired a, a property and they will be a producer in about three years. Uh, th this is the outline. This is what they're projecting. And by the way, Elijah, just to make sure, I am a big supporter of Zinc One and I own shares. Um, I've owned them since the day the company 
um, launched on on the uh, on the on the public exchange for a few months now. We're following the company and uh, we're we're big big supporters of Keith Newmar and what the company itself is doing with the management team. So uh, uh, zinc mines are not uh, the primary um, product of of uh, of zinc miners. Zinc miners usually do not have zinc as their as their um, main target. They 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 have it as a byproduct. So right now the supply aspect of the zinc market is very tight with China consuming 47% of the world supply. If you're looking at, at a project from start to finish, you're looking at about 10 to 15 years um, to get it permitted, to get it done. What they've done is leapfrog that entire process with a high grade um, project in, in, in South America. That's just one example. Uh, what I did create for your listeners is our entire watch list, the entire junior sector quality companies that we're looking at with our buy-up prices and that's at wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash watch list and if you want to become even more educated and learn how um, to evaluate these companies from start to finish we created a special report uh, for today which is on wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash gold playbook and and on gold playbook you can kind of go and see exactly how we evaluate these companies start to finish. All right. Well, Lee Gantz, thank you once again for joining us today. Thanks, Elijah. Sure. Um, so basically, the, the, uh, the JP Morgan, with the fact that um, that they can look at the screens of what the clients are doing and where people are setting their options, um, you know, the, the short positions, the long positions, the futures, they can see kind of uh, kind of the emotional uh, trend or thread line running through uh, traders from from the entire planet, from behind the scenes. They can uh, use this information either to entice their own clients to do something while they do the opposite of that, knowing fully well that uh, the clients will lose money, which is what they're, uh, they've been up to for years. And uh, what is more remarkable, and you know, this, is, this has no 100% um, confirmation, but uh, most likely they're building a physical hoard uh, of their own um, for 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 the uh, for the time when the silver manipulation will end, and then this, uh, the the price of silver will explode to the upside. So you've got this this massive short, short position on paper that they're doing and making a profit of, and they're also accumulating on the physical side using this uh, the suppressed price that they themselves create. It's a very smart game on, on their part, but it's uh, it's very unfortunate that it goes on for, for such a long time. It, uh, you know if you're if you're looking to expand your your physical position, your bullion position, it's great for, for you because you get to do it at, at lower prices. but uh, as a silver stock investor, this is very frustrating um, you know for, for a lot of people. Uh, but on the flip side, they accumulate so much physical silver, that they themselves will be beneficiaries of rising silver prices, which is definitely an incentive um, once this regulation comes. But um, that said, let's take a look at 2016, right? Um, 2016, the silver, uh, the global silver, uh, you know, nominal trading is about 2.2 um, billion dollars. Uh, I'm sorry, 2.2 trillion dollars, and the uh, the estimated global investment in silver is just 4.4 billion. So you've got a leveraged paper market of about 233 dollars to one. Uh, pretty insane, and uh, you know, j just just remember uh, when you when you manipulate prices, when you suppress prices, you're just condensing energy, right? So. Uh, on the flip side, when that condensed energy releases, it, it can be spectacular. Um, 
obviously there's uh, this this has been around for many years this talk of silver manipulation silver rigging and when will silver break out um it's all of these are open questions but it is very important to understand that when when you got something that's leveraged 233 to 1 once you start deleveraging then the price almost acts accordingly so if this goes from 233 to 1 to 100 to 1 silver will double most likely or, or close to double when you see this thing going to 50 to 1 it will quadruple and from today's prices you're looking at 50 to 60 dollars uh per ounce of silver now that will change a lot of things in the silver supply obviously because more companies will come into the market um but, but the 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 opportunity will be in that in that two to three year period before new production comes in now you talk about what jp morgan does and how they're kind of it's kind of like they're playing a game of poker where they can see all of what the other players are doing and they do this by because they run the silver etf slv can you expand on this yeah that's elijah that's that's illegal uh, just think of any other industry where the actual uh, commodity trades for one dollar to every two two hundred thirty three dollars that that exchange in paper. Uh, it, it's not only illegal; it's dangerous. Now you've talked about that the gold and silver ratio is completely out of whack right now. And if we see silver kind of revalue itself and rebalance itself, we could see silver jump to you know fifty or sixty dollars an ounce. Can you uh, reiterate a little bit about uh, the reasoning behind that? Sure. Um, obviously, going back in history, the the ratio is not seventy five to one as it is today. Um, g- gold is is a different type of metal than the other metals that uh, that are considered commodities. All the gold ever um, in supply is still around. Most of it, if it's not in jewelry or used as as uh, partly. Uh, for electronical uh, components, it's still around. So the demand for gold and what drives gold price higher, especially in the fiat monetary system, is not uh, a lack of supply. There is supply. It is the investment demand coming not from India and their jewelry uh, supply because that's very cyclical, very, very seasonal. What drives gold price higher is is its uh, role as an alternative currency uh, to all the the national currencies. So when gold outperforms other national currencies, uh, it outperforms the price of uh, of US dollars as well. And that happens in a declining or a negative interest rate environment, which is what's going on today. Uh, but uh, the the other fact that is the other side of this is that it, it, gold prices act better if the S&P 500 is uh, acting in, and uh, obviously this regulation, this fear that's going on right now um, has already scared away the CME group, um, it's scared away Thompson's Rotors. These are the two custodians that, that are um, now ending their their obligations uh, with the COMEX two years ahead of time. So you've, you've got a lot of changes in the silver market. Hopefully you'll see the end of this uh, manipulation or the unwinding of this manipulation coming to fruition in the next two to three years. And, um, you know, as I've said many times, I think the more appropriate uh, silver to gold ratio for these times when gold is used as money on the governmental central bank side and silver is not monetized by big, by big institutions, I think it's about 40 to 1. So you're looking at a, at a lot higher silver prices. Now, is what is happening, you know, this manipulation, is that even legal what they're doing? Well, uh, it, it is legal uh, uh, unless you prove it uh, that, uh, that, that this is uh, blatant manipulation, meaning if uh, leverage is legal, so – and naked la- leverage is legal as well. Is it ethical? Obviously, no, because they're using the mechanism of fiat money um, and credit to their behalf with the fact that they they are the one issuing credit to the market so they've got an advantage a a very unfair advantage over uh, you know uh, regular investors is it is it illegal of course if you get caught 
uh, manipulating on the spot, it is illegal, obviously, because, uh, um, you know, uh, Deutsche has, has uh, already admitted to silver manipulation. That's what they have admitted to, to manipulating the price. Now, when you leverage something um, to the order of what they're doing, to me, it is illegal, for sure. There, uh, the, the entire market, if it's 233 to 1 uh, leverage. Our mission at SD Bullion is clear the lowest cost gold and silver available online. While we do not have pretty blue boxes, free shipping on every order, or glamorous gold and silver infomercials, SD Bullion has the lowest prices that may save you hundreds on your next order. So before you make your next investment, do the math and join the over 40,000 new customers who have recently made the switch to SD Bullion. Why pay more? Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with SilverDoctors.com. And with us today is Lior Gantz from WealthResearchGroup.com. Lior, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, I'd first like to discuss the silver market. Now, you recently have been discussing that JP Morgan is running the world's most monopolized market, the silver market, and that they're unfairly manipulating the price. Can you discuss this? Sure. First of all, it's not just JP Morgan. Um, obviously, Deutsche Bank has, has settled out of court. Um, HSBC has been named Barclays in England. Um, so, so there's there's a bunch of major banks, and uh, what they're supposed to be doing is add liquidity to the market. Um, but they do all sorts of um, of silver manipulation, fixing the price. Suppressing the price, um, sh you know, shorting it. There's so many things that uh, that are happening in the silver market. But what is important is that part of it is now changing. There's there's a a wave of regulations that are coming due uh, in 2018 that are changing the amount and an exposure that banks will allow themselves um, now that the, you know Deutsche Bank has been fined 38 million dollars um, and, and uh, the eyes of more regulators are are on these banks uh, you're already starting to see a change in the way silver trades